She started crying almost as soon as I walked in, and he jumped right in and told me that there was no easy way to say what he was about to say, but he and my wife were in love. That after my wife got her papers, she contacted me asking if I could meet and talk. I haven't responded and I don't know if I will. Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story, guys. I will put the link to this in the description like usual. You guys read the title? Let's get into it. So, wife is planning to leave me, has left me for my best friend, and they've already started trying to get pregnant. I guess I should call him my former best friend at this point, but it's hard to accept it's all gone just like that. You spend so many years with a person building a relationship, and one day it all turns to dust. I've known him since high school, 15 years ago. He was like a brother to me, and like a son to my parents. When we were younger, we were at each other's houses all the time. He was always coming with my family on trips, and I did the same with his family. We've done so much together. He was the best man at my wedding, and I would have been the best man at his wedding. Many trips and nights spent out together. Many times we helped each other. Many conversations about life, love, and ourselves. He was always my go-to person in tight situations when I needed advice. It's hard to say how much losing him hurts because for whatever else he is, he was always there for me when I needed him and a solid source of advice. He was a true friend until he wasn't. It may be as big as a blow to lose him as losing my wife. I've been married to my wife for almost five years, but we've been together for seven. I remember when we first met, love at first sight. She was gorgeous and had these really piercing blue eyes, a really infectious laugh. We hit it off and to my surprise, she accepted when I was asking her out. Even though I felt like she was out of my league, I felt even more in love with her as we got to know each other. She has such a passion for life and helping people. She was so kind and gentle with everyone. Just a really warm person. And that made me love her more. I love being married to her. And I always felt our marriage was great. Not even just good. I was not one of those husbands that let himself go. I took care of myself and ate well. I remembered all of our anniversaries and special dates. When she talked to me, I listened and paid attention. I took an interest in her life genuinely because I loved her and it was important to me, but I also gave her space and avoided being too needy or clingy. I made sure to do my part around the house. I cleaned as much as she did. Our sex life was great. As far as I could tell, I did my best to love her and care for her the way a husband should and show her she was appreciated. I tried my best to keep dating her after we married. I can say without any doubt that I never took her for granted. I don't know what else I could have done. I have asked myself that over and over again, and I still don't know. I wonder if I did too much. Did she think I was too much of a pushover? Did she not respect me? I'm not at all saying our marriage was perfect. We did have arguments, but they were never major ones. The trouble started when my best friend broke up with his girlfriend. He was pretty upset about it and took it hard. I talked to him, but my wife was asking me one day if I cared if she went out for a coffee with him just to talk and give him a woman's view or opinion. I told her that was fine with me. She and my best friend were also friends. We'd done couples trips with my friend and his girlfriend and she'd also, also hung out with him tons because he was around me so much. I didn't think anything of it because their relationship never seemed inappropriate. I do remember him saying I was lucky and she was attractive when we first started dating and when I married her, but there were no inappropriate jokes or anything like that. My wife might have said he was handsome at some point, but that was it. I saw no red flags and even after thinking about it more, I still don't see any. I never saw anything which made me think there was ever a chance of them being more than friends. When my wife came back from coffee, she seemed a bit off. She was really angry with his ex and said that he deserved better. I remember telling her something like, he's young and he'll, he'll mend in time. And she seemed very upset by this. 
She said that he needed time and that whatever girl ended up with him would be very lucky and his ex was a fool to leave him. I may be misremembering parts of that conversation, but that was the basic gist. She was very sparse on details and very vague, but it didn't seem weird to me at the time. It seemed like she was being protective, the same way I would be protective of him as my friend. Her behavior started getting stranger after that night. She wasn't doing anything really overt or suspicious, but she was vague about what she was doing. She would say that she's going to see one of her friends or, or to run an errand, stuff like that. I'm not a... I'm not a controlling person and she'd never give me any reason to doubt her, so I didn't make an issue of it. And really at the time I didn't find it so strange. I noticed my friend was being weird too, but I thought it was because of his split and him being depressed. I would invite him to hang out and he'd turn me down, which was unusual. He never had a reason other than he was busy. I started seeing less and less of him, and when I did see him, he was different. I would not say nervous, but definitely seemed not to be comfortable. He sent me a message asking me to stop by his house one day. He said we needed to talk about some things, and he had to get some stuff off his chest. I drove over there, not suspecting anything. I knocked on the door, and he came to answer. I tried to make some jokes and light the conversation, and he completely ignored me. He was asking me to go into the living room, and there was my wife sitting on his couch. I don't know if I knew at the moment, but I did feel a sense of dread start to come over me. She started crying almost as soon as I walked in, and he jumped right in and told me that there was no easy way to say what he was about to say, but he and my wife were in love and wanted to be together. I stood there completely stunned. I felt like I wasn't even alive for a while. When I started to come back to my senses, they both tried to say how sorry they were and that they both loved me and regretted happening. They told me that this just happened and they never intended for things to turn out like this. They knew they were wrong, but it didn't matter because they were in love. They both promised that they had not had sex and it was only an emotional affair. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I don't know if it really matters. And that is basically where we are now. Since that day, I've got more text messages from them apologizing and one from my wife asking if I'm okay and telling me she's here for me and still cares for me, but I mostly ignore them. They aren't as frequent anymore either. She decided to move out of our house. I didn't ask her where she was going, but a friend of mine told me that she moved in with my former friend as soon as she left. That was only a few months ago. She stopped by the house a few days ago to pick up some things. I tried to avoid her, but then she's asking me if I had a second. She told me that she and my former friend are trying to get pregnant. She wanted to give me a heads up so that we can deal with it as we go through our divorce. She also wanted to tell me personally because she felt like I deserved to know and hear it from her. It hurt me so much to hear how she's already moving on. We wanted to have children together, but she wanted to wait until she turned 30. Now he's going to get to be the father to her children and I'm going to have to watch her carry his child. I am here looking for any advice you can give me. I don't know how to deal with her getting pregnant. I feel like that's going to be a struggle and a source of pain once it happens. I feel so jealous of him because he's getting the life I wanted with her. I also know that her getting pregnant is really the end. Once that happens, there's no chance we could reconcile. I have considered asking her to try counseling, but I haven't because I doubt she would be interested since she wants him in a life together with him. I also don't know how to process all of this. I don't know how they could both do something like this or how I could not see it. I don't understand why she left when we were happy. I feel like I don't believe in anything anymore. If you can't trust your wife and best friend and a marriage doesn't last with as much effort as I put in, then nothing is real and life is all one big lie. Life just isn't fair sometimes. Oh, he came back with an update. Let's, let's read through this update real quick. First of all, I want to thank everyone who commented and everyone who sent me messages of support. The last few days have been the best I've had since my wife left. I feel like I'm at least able now to think of what comes next. I really don't know how to thank you all, but just know that the support I've gotten has helped. 
I don't have much of an update, but I thought you guys deserve to know about a few things. Number one, I decided I am going to message my former friend's ex to see what her version of the breakup is. Nothing may come of it, but I think I have to at least see if I can find out anything else. Number two, I had talked to one attorney, but haven't really gotten serious about a lawyer. Next week, I will start a serious look for one. My friends and family have given me some recommendations, so I will go through their list. Number three, I don't know when I will start, but I'm pretty sure I'll enroll in some type of counseling. I don't feel like my mental state right now is very good, and I don't think I have the tools to pull myself out of this. I need help. Number four, I am thinking of writing to my ex and ex-friend. A lot of you was asking me why I didn't do anything to him when they told me, and that bothered me because I realized I never took the chance to tell them how I feel and how they've hurt me. I feel like they need to know even if they don't care. Number five, there were a lot of other suggestions about things to do to help deal with the situation. I'm going to make some changes around my house to try and make things more comfortable. Comfortable enough here until I can move. I will also try to keep myself busy, but in reality, the hard part so far has been nights when I'm alone and it is quiet like now. Wow, your best friend. Let me give my thoughts. Man, to get stabbed in your back by your best friend. This, he grew up with this guy. They're, they're basically brothers. You know, they're not blood brothers, but this is like his brother. And then your wife. Did you say how long you were married? No, I don't, I don't think he mentioned it. But your wife and your best friend. She was plotting for a while. They both were. They both were plotting for a while. This probably was going... You know what? And to read the update you just had, I bet you that's why people were suggesting that you message or get in touch with his ex. That's probably why she broke up with him. She probably saw some inappropriate text messages between your wife and him. But if that's true, she's messed up for not telling you. She should have said something. But um, we don't know if that's true or not. Definitely lawyer up. You said you spoke to one lawyer and... Next week, you're going to jump on it, you know, even more. I also noticed something you said. You said once they have a kid, it's like set in stone that she's gone and you can't get back together. Dude, like she cheated on you. That's it's set in stone that she she wants out. She's just not your wife anymore. I guess I guess you just have to come to terms. And I know it's going to take some time. It's your wife. It was your wife. Someone you thought you guys you thought you guys had the perfect Really, or not perfect, but a great marriage. Everything was going good. Nothing was wrong. And she just bails out with your with your best friend. So I know it's gonna it's gonna take some time. You know, you can work out as much as you want. You can, you know, focus on your career, hobbies and things like that, but it's it's gonna take some time. So counseling is a good move. Going to talk to somebody, whether it's a family member, a friend, whatever. Um <laughs> probably don't want to talk to any friends right now but you know talking to somebody definitely definitely will help you know it's not it, it wasn't with some just random person it was your best friend man what a grimy piece of crap man and think about it if they're moving on that fast okay we're gonna tell him that we're being to, we're, we're together um but we never had sex come on um they, as soon as they tell you then she's saying we're trying to get pregnant. But then she said they never they they both said they never had sex yet. It was just emotional. That's a lie. They were trying to soften it for you. You knew that was a lie. It's been going on for a while. And now all of a sudden they want to get pregnant. They've been at this for a long time. I'm almost willing to bet. I'm almost willing to bet. That's why his girlfriend left him. She saw some inappropriate text messages. Something. She caught them in the act something. I guarantee you. But he has another update, guys. But let's check out these comments first. Someone said, you need to accept the fact that your wife is a very calculating and deceptive person. They did all of this behind your back and she and she kept you in the dark while they started their relationship. Yep. Her feelings for you were long gone before they dumped this on you. Your friend is trash. And don't buy into any nonsense of, of checking up on you, caring for you, or being there for you. That is so pathetic and disingenuous. 
that it's sickening. Telling you about her plans to get pregnant with him was not her being considerate. I know it was her. I think it was her just rubbing shit, rubbing stuff in his face. It was her trying to do some type of damage control. But it does tell you to get her, to get your legal affairs in order and push the divorce ahead as fast as possible to avoid potential paternity issues. You also need to make everyone in your family and friends aware of exactly what these two have done. The best thing you should do is never have any contact with your friend again at all. Make your ex aware that other than topics concerning the divorce you will discuss nothing else and that there will be no friendship or small talk. Avoid any place that they may be and keep things strictly business and let your attorney deal with her as much as possible. Make it a point. Make it a point to get everything that belongs to her out of your residence as soon as possible. And then go as hard, no contact as you can. Block them on everything. Get yourself into therapy so you can rebuild your self-esteem. Heal and move on to build a fulfilling life for yourself. It is a blessing that you did not have kids with this woman. You need to take care of yourself. Eat right, exercise, and get good sleep. Reach out and know that you are not alone. I am pulling for you, man. I am not disagreeing at all with you. But it's so hard for me to think about her. I never saw her act that way with anyone. She was always kind and genuine with people. At the same time, you're right. It would seem foolish to think that everything just happened as they say. Exactly. Exactly. I just don't know what happened. Even to the end, I feel like we were great together. There's no moment I can think of where I'd say she stopped loving me. I want to ask her so badly to try and make sense of it all. I could maybe make peace with it if she told me she stopped loving me. When and why? I don't buy what they say either. I think they just feel guilty. All of your suggestions make sense. I may need to avoid them as much as possible to avoid causing more pain. I have told my family and some of our mutual friends what happened. Most have been really supportive. A couple didn't want to get involved or take sides. Someone, someone called out something he just said. I want to ask her so badly to try to make sense of it all. I could maybe make peace with it if she told me she stopped loving me when and why if you was asking her would you even believe her answers though she's proven that she's a liar and you can't trust her you're going to have to make peace with it on your own and i'm sorry for that it's going to be incredibly difficult but you will make it through absolutely and guys like i said he has an update so let's go ahead and check out his update all right update Wife is planning to leave me has left me for my best friend and they've already started trying to get pregnant. He starts off with, I want to thank you guys again for all the messages of support you've sent and all of the advice. I never expected internet strangers to care that much about me or my situation. Yeah, you'd be surprised. But it's done me a lot of good to be reminded of how kind and good people can be. I tried to respond to most of my messages. But even if I didn't, please know that I read them and it helped me to know that I had so much support. I also want to apologize to everyone for not updating sooner. I know I've been saying I would post an update for a few weeks, but every time I thought about it, I just couldn't force myself to do it, but I'm in a good place to write it today. One of the things a lot of people recommended on the original was for me to contact my ex-friend's girlfriend to see if she knew anything about his affair with my wife. I did contact her. But she confirmed my ex-friend's story about the reasons for their breakup. I was asking if she had noticed anything weird or had any reason to suspect he was involved at all with another woman before they split. And she said she didn't have any suspicion. I doubt she has any reason not to be honest with me. And she seemed genuinely shocked that they ended up together. So I believe her. In my first post, I added an update about writing my ex-friend and wife a letter for closure. Most of you advised me not to do this. I decided to follow that advice. I wrote it for myself, but I didn't send it. I think you guys were right that it was better to not send it since they wouldn't care anyway. I finally chose an attorney to represent me a few weeks ago. He was someone that was recommended to me and I felt like I could trust him to protect me and make sure I came out of the divorce as whole as possible. I officially filed for divorce last week. That was a hard day, but I knew it had to happen. I won't say that there isn't still a part of me that fantasizes about her coming back and saying she made a mistake and wants to start over. Ah, uh, come on, man. But that's not realistic, 
and I can't live my life based on a fantasy that will never happen. I think any boost I felt leading up to the filing was taken away by, by the filing and I have been feeling more depressed again. I looked into some personal counseling like you guys suggested, but I decided, but I decided now was not the best time. I recently started a new project at work, and with some of the changes I've made in my life, I've been staying busy, which helps. Good. It will probably sound crazy to say this, but there is also a part of me that doesn't really want to feel better. I feel like this, I feel like this is how I should feel when my marriage is ending. About the alienation of affection suit. I decided not to pursue it. I know that most of you wanted me to do this, but my attorney told me that it wouldn't be easy and he couldn't and he couldn't guarantee anything. I just don't care about the money. Even if I had pursued it and won it, wouldn't have changed anything. And my main desire right now is to be done with this as soon as possible. I have decided to move away and start over once this is done, and I can't do and I can't do that until my divorce wraps up. The only other interesting update I have is that after my wife got her papers, she contacted me asking if I could meet and talk. I haven't responded and I don't know if I will. I don't feel like I have anything left to say to her and I don't think she has anything to tell me that I want to hear. As far as what I've been doing, I've been running more. I've done some reading, tried yoga and some meditation. I like the yoga, but the meditation not so much. Work has been much busier, which is good. I thought about learning French, but I probably will put that on hold for now. I have some other projects I started for my hobbies. Took fishing up again, just really trying to stay busy so I don't have as much time alone where my mind is idle. As far as what changes I've made around the house, I got rid of a lot of trinkets and things that reminded me of my wife. I did end up getting a body pillow for my bed, and as dumb as that seems, it helped me relax more. I am still staying in the guest room, but I may move back into my master soon. It doesn't matter much at this point. I still am not sleeping well, and I don't think changing rooms would make a difference. Well, that's about it. I've been reading a lot more about failed relationships and through some of the sites that were recommended to me. I watched one video on YouTube that has helped me reframe the way I thought about our relationship. I won't link it since I don't know if that's okay. But the short version is that the man giving the talk says that if the person you were with moves on quickly from you, then they weren't really your one. I try now to think about my wife that way. I thought she was my one, but she never really was if she could do all this. He also made some really good points about memories and accepting when someone you cared about becomes a memory. And that's really all I have guys. Not a really happy or eventful update, but that's how it goes. I guess. Wow. Wow. Let's check out these comments. Someone called out something he said. The only other interesting update I have is that after my wife got her paper, she contacted me asking if we could meet and talk. You owe her nothing. Anytime you see her or hear anything about her, your internal heel clock will be set backwards. Most divorces can be handled completely via lawyer with no contact. Can yours do that? Your wife wants to see you to get closure and make herself feel better. She wants to say to herself, at least he seems okay. Deny her this balm. If you must text her back, just say you don't want to be around toxic people and you don't want betrayers in your life. Use that language. It's magic. He replied and said, it feels like that's probably what she wants. A chance to try and make herself feel like less of a crappy person and to get some type of closure. It's just amazing to me after everything she has done that she could still feel entitled to that. I would definitely say that my mood has changed a lot. I don't feel as sad in the same way anymore, but I feel a lot more anger. Even just typing about her on here makes me really angry. I don't like feeling that way, but this is how I feel nonetheless. Someone said, you're a good man. You didn't deserve this. And I feel guilty in a way. I reread your post and I am that guy you were talking about. I did, I did let myself go. I do forget special days. Yet my wife wouldn't cheat on me in a million years. She deserves more from me. Hopefully hearing your story will inspire me to do more. Things will turn around for you. He replied to that and said, in my case, it didn't make a difference. So I don't know how much those things matter anyway. Someone said, I sort of enjoyed my anger phase. It was much better than what came before and after. Wow, guys. And on that note, let me know what you think about this in the comments. 
Man, ultimate betrayal, man. Your best friend and your wife. Man, man, man. Guys, I'll put the link to this in the description like usual. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And I'll catch you guys at the next one.